Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if you like my content, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up are very important to my videos and my channel, so I appreciate it. If you see something you like, please take a moment and hit that uh, like button. Um, here, it is January 16th. I guess it's a Tuesday. I'm in uh, Arizona at Alamo Lake State Park. I am currently... It's been an interesting trip. The site that I had picked out, I really didn't realize there was all these big uh, lights uh, illuminating the area. So it's not a great place to image this particular site. I reserved a site down in Campground E for the February new moon. And uh, I talked to the guy that runs the place here and he said that site is uh, really dark. So I'm looking forward to that. But I decided to stay here and uh, work through some issues. I had some issues with my uh, Edge HD 8, and uh, I had to take my rotator out of my image train on my Red Cat 51 because I was not able to get focus. With the helical focuser, I was right at the stop where the focus point was. I have a 16.5 inch, 16.5 uh, millimeter spacer in there. I think what I needed was a 10 millimeter spacer to give myself a little bit more uh, back focus space, but I decided to take the rotator out so I can move forward. And what I'm doing right now, and that's why I'm doing this video, is uh, I wanted to show you that uh, I'm, if you've seen some of my other videos, I've, uh, let you know that I wanted to use Tom Palmer's plugin called Target Scheduler. And that's basically what I'm using to run my, uh, imaging sessions tonight. And I think I did a video on this that you could look back at. And Tom Palmer did a presentation on the Astro Imaging channel that you might want to take a look at. But it basically has three main sections, target management, schedule preview, and acquired images. Briefly, you load your targets that you want to image, and you could load them for like months in advance. Uh, you could put, you know, and then um, you kind of have categories it's all kind of up to you what you want those categories to be. But right now, I'm imaging M42. And later this evening, it'll move over to the Siegel Nebula. And the way you kind of know, you load all your plans. Here's my imaging plan, my exposure plan for M42. I'm just taking short exposures, HA red, green, and blue, and I'm taking them in, um, in this order here. I'm essentially taking three sub exposures for each filter, and then I do a dither. And that way I'm kind of reducing the number of dithers that I do along the course of the night. And then my uh, image plan for my seal is I'm going to be doing some HA uh, at uh, 30 uh, sub-exposures on my goal per, eight, uh, per narrowband filter. And then collect, uh, do RGB stars, I'm going to take some exposures 60 second long in red, green, and blue. And I want 20 each of those. So that's, that's the... Uh, the plan that I've requested. And then if we go into scheduler preview and let me get off this, um, um, this is the plan that it's running tonight. Uh, it started with M42. It's going to move to the Siegel Nebula. It's going to catch a little bit of data on IC2169. And then it's going to catch a, a little bit of data from the Leo triplet. And again, with my Red Cat 51 and 250 millimeters, those, those galaxies are going to be kind of smallish. But 
again, uh, just to do a test. So the plan for tonight is to do four different targets. Target scheduler is figured out that that's what I'm able to do uh, based upon what I would like to do uh, as far as capturing data for all these targets. And again, this will happen over subsequent nights if uh, as, as you're as you're imaging. All right, so that's uh, kind of what we got there. And then um, the other part is here is what I've acquired so far. Let's refresh that. Okay. Now I've got a lot of clouds, so things are being rejected tonight. I've decided to just forge ahead even with the clouds and let things be rejected. Again, just to kind of get the feel for this target scheduler. And what you have over here is what's been rejected. Oh, that's just for the red filter. So if I go for all any filter, uh, I'm getting a lot of um, rejections on star count. And typically that's when a cloud uh, comes in the way. And, and what you can see here is um, 1662, you know, here's the star count, and you see that these have dropped off, so it's rejecting those images. Earlier, I had some guiding issues, so it rejected three images, and you can tweak the uh, parameters for how images get rejected. I'm just letting it run on default tonight to see what it does knowing that there's clouds up in the sky and everything. Again, I, I don't really care in a sense uh, what happens as far as how many <clears throat> sub-exposures I collect tonight. I'm more interested in seeing this target schedule at work. So <clears throat> I think I already did a video on this, but basically it's a pretty straightforward template and advanced sequencer. You have a start, you have a, an end, and then you have an instruction set um, in between. And in the um, instruction set, you bring in the target scheduler container. And this is uh, the target scheduler container. It will show you uh, what is being done It'll display the target that's being imaged. And so then when it switches to the other target, it will, uh, it'll switch. It will show you what it's doing. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I do that too often. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what, uh, what this is doing and that's everything that it's done so far so you have visibility what's what's going on and then in imaging um, your standard stuff now I am noticing that at times my B-Link U59 is a little bit uh, sluggish so that is something that I'll keep an eye on but I'm also doing <clears throat> very short exposures here with my ASI 294MM Pro and uh, in bin one. So these are pretty large file sizes. So got to keep that in consideration. So yeah, um, I'm happy that I was able to get this far and give the target scheduler written by Tom Palmer a spin. If you're interested in a target scheduler, I think I did a video on this and put a link uh, to the presentation that Tom Palmer did at the uh, Astro Imaging Channel uh, podcast or uh, video, video. And you can also get a lot of information on the Nina Discord. Tom hangs out there. It's very responsive to answering any questions that you may have about target scheduler or any issues that you may run into. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased, 
you know, I, I was doing one target in uh, Nina, and then that forced me to go into the advanced scheduler because I wanted to do more than one target in a night. And I worked my way through that, and I got results. Uh, but now, as you can see, the plan for tonight is to do uh, four targets. And I, I really have, you know, very little work to do to make that happen anymore other than just building um, a simple te template and dropping in the target scheduler container. So pretty cool. Might be something that would be of interest to you. But this is uh, really what I love about Nina. Uh, all the plugins uh, that are available and uh, even pushover, which if anything fails, Oh, I think it will, I think, yeah, we'll leave it in an emergency. It will send me uh, an alert and wake me up if I happen to be sleeping. So something fails along the course of the night. All right. Again, uh, just uh, hanging out here at uh, Alamo Lake State Park in uh, Arizona. And I'm very glad I came. And... Uh, I'm very happy that I got this far with Target Scheduler. I got to figure out what's happened with my Edge HD 8. Last time I was out, everything was perfect. Uh, something, I think, in the transport, possibly. Um, I'm really not sure. I don't know why I've got straight across stars. If you got any ideas, please put a comment in uh, so I could take a look at that. Um, I will... Uh, purchase some more spacers of various sizes and maybe uh, change my uh, back focus a little bit to see if that makes those um, anomalies go away. Uh, again, my um, collimation is almost spot on, so that's what's uh, a little bit uh, perplexing. But, you know, this has uh, kind of been my experience and you just got to work through your uh, issues. And at least there for a while, I was getting some very nice data and was able to produce some nice images. And uh, I'll get back there again. I just kind of have to understand uh, what might have happened. And I think it's probably back focus related since my collimation is uh, is uh, good. But anyway, this, uh, this has made the trip worthwhile. And uh, other than that, I hope you're imaging and have some good weather. See you next time.